Hello everyone, welcome to today's webinar on Southwest Minnesota Arts Council Arts in the Schools Grants for fiscal year 2019. I am Carolyn Koska, the Financial and Grants Administrator here at SMOC. Today we're going to do a brief overview of Southwest Minnesota Arts Council or SMOC, um, talk about the program guidelines for Arts in the Schools Grants, take a look at that application, and then some tips and the grant process for Arts in the Schools grants. Southwest Minnesota Arts Council is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting and encouraging the development of the arts in the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota by serving as a source of funds and technical services, which enable local organizations educational institutions and individuals to sponsor and or create and promote the arts in their communities. Our funding for the Arts in the Schools program comes from the State of Minnesota and the Arts and Cultural Heritage or Legacy Fund. SMOC is committed to supporting artists and arts organizations in creating, producing, and presenting high quality arts activities overcoming barriers to accessing high quality arts activities, instilling the arts into the community and public life, supporting high quality age appropriate arts education for all ages to develop knowledge, skills, and understanding of the arts, and supporting events and activities that represent the diverse ethnic and cultural arts traditions of the region. So these are some things to keep in mind as you're planning your project. The Arts in the Schools grant program is open to public schools in the 18 counties of the SMOC service region. There are four types of projects you can do under this grant program. Uh, artist residencies, juried student art exhibits, arts field trips, and prepackaged theater experiences. And we'll talk about each one. Artist residencies are learning partnerships between an artist and a school and they may involve any arts discipline. Um, here's a list of some things your residency should have. A professional artist or arts organization, a core student group that will receive extended in-depth artist contact. You may um, have the artist work um, shorter periods of time with other students in the school, but there should be a core group that has that in-depth contact. Um, the teacher needs to be present during artist-student contact time. Um, we hope you'll have artist-teacher contact time for planning and training. Um, you might want to have uh, a pre-residency planning day, and um, you could do an in-service or a special teacher's training as part of your project. Um, and finally, you need to have a community component to be able to share the experience that the students had. This could be an exhibit of their work from the residency, um, a meet the artist night, maybe the artist does um, a class for the community in general too. Uh, juried student art exhibits, this is new for us this year. Um, so a school or a group of schools can bring in professional artists to jury a student art show that will be open to the public. So the grant funds for this type of project can pay for the artists who will be the jurors, um, advertising the show in the community, student and awards. Um, and at the event, the school may also wish to include student music performances. And even though um, you may be doing an exhibit as two schools or a group of schools together. There's only one grant allowed per show. For arts field trips, they may include visits to artist studios, performances by professional theater, dance, or musical groups, uh, readings by writers, art galleries. Those are just some suggestions. Um, and the field trips have to be open to all students within a grade or a subject discipline rather than exclusive to a student organization. And then finally, prepackaged theater experiences. You can bring in um, a group 
like Prairie Fire or Missoula Children's Theater to do a program in your school. Um, if you are not a school, you can apply for prepackaged theater experiences in our art project program as well. So we have some different amounts depending on the type of project that you're looking at. For an artist residency, you can request up to $4,000. For the juried art exhibit and the field trip, you can request up to $2,500, and all three of those no match is required from the school. Um, Prepackaged theater projects are a little different. Um, you can request up to $2,500, but or 80% um, of the project's cost, whichever is less. So you will be expected to provide at least a 20% cash match toward that project. The following are not eligible for these grants. Uh, requests from parochial schools, payment of school personnel, substitutions for regular school programming or curriculum, supplies beyond those that are needed for this particular project, projects that don't have an art focus, activities that take place outside of Minnesota, so unfortunately you could not take a field trip to Sioux Falls, um, activities not open to the public, activities for the religious socialization of the participants or audience, fundraising events. In other words, um, the grant should allow your project to break even. You shouldn't profit above um, the grant. Um, payments of debts incurred before the grant begins, so you can't have started a project already and then apply for a grant to finish it. Grant funds being used to match another SMOT grant or applicants with past due final reports. And this is just an overview of some of our guidelines. So please make sure to check the guidelines for this program. And then we also have general uh, grant guidelines that are um, applicable for all SMOT grants. So please check those as well. Your project will need to have a start date and an end date. The start date is the point at which your project is set in motion, um, including any of these activities, payments of fees or contracts, advertising or public notification, ordering and paying for supplies, and any auditions or rehearsals. Um, so you cannot spend any funds before the start date. If for some reason you would need to spend money before your start date, um, which might be a deposit on a contract, you can't include that cost in the grant budget. And just as a reminder, your start date should not be the date of your first activity or event. You need to start in time to um, make all these kinds of payments and planning ahead. You'll also need to choose a project end date and allow a little time after your activities are completed to wrap up your project. So for this year, we have uh, two deadlines for Arts in the Schools grants. Uh, the first round coming up is a deadline of October 10th with uh, projects that will start December 15th or later. And then our second round, the deadline is January 23rd for projects starting March 15th or later. Um, also note that applications must be submitted by 4.30 p.m. on the deadline date, otherwise they will not be eligible. For your project, you'll need to have a project director and an authorizing official. The project director should be the person who is most directly responsible for the project and this may or may not be the grant writer, but usually is the um, teacher whose class will be participating in the project. Um, and then you'll need an authorizing official, which in this case would be the principal, superintendent, or someone else who has authorizing power for your school. The project director and the authorizing official cannot be the same person. And just be aware that both of those people will need to sign the application 
the contract and your final report. Now we'll go on and take a look at where you can find some of this information on our website and then go into the application. So there are a couple of places where you can find um, the online grant system on our website. Uh, there's a login right here on the home page. Otherwise, if you go under grants and schools and to the Arts in the Schools grant page, there's this apply now button that'll take you to the online grant system. Um, on the website here, you'll see that we've got the specific Arts in the Schools grant guidelines and then the general grant guidelines that apply to all of the grant programs. Um, we've got the applications in a Word document so that if you'd like to um, work in that first and save that somewhere and then later paste the answers to your questions into the online grant system, you can do that. Um, budget forms, we have actually two different budget forms depending on which type of project you're doing and we'll talk about that more in the application and these forms are also available in the application. Um, the evaluation criteria for the program, which we'll talk about too, um, a video tutorial for the online grant system and then here you have listed the deadlines and other dates for this year for the program. So we'll go into the online grant system. If you have an account already, you can go ahead and log in. If you're new, you can click here to create a new account. And if you're not sure if you have an account or not, you can just contact us. But we will log in here. All right, so if you have previously had an account and logged in, you'll come to the applicant dashboard and then you'll need to click this apply button up here. If you're a new applicant, you will come directly to this apply page. And um, you'll scroll through and find the application that you're looking for. Arts in the Schools is quite a way down. Here it is. Um, if you want to preview the application first, you can click here and just look at it. But if you're ready to go, hit the apply button. So you'll need a name for your project um, and the amount that you're requesting. You may want to wait until after you've done your budget first to fill this in. And here again are links to guidelines and that document of the application questions and the evaluation score sheet. Uh, just a reminder that um, there's a pretty big character limit in most of the fields, um, but we're not expecting you to use all of those characters. We really like to see short, concise answers. So the first thing you'll do is choose which type of project you're going to be working on because this will affect certain questions that show up for you below. So for the moment, we'll say artist residency. You'll describe your project. Uh, what are you doing? Who's involved? What grade level? What kind of schedule will you be operating on? Here's where you enter your start and end date, how many hours the artist will be in contact with the student, um, access to the programming. So if participation fees are charged, how will all students be able to access it? Uh, you'll need to talk about um, how this project will be supplementing the programs in the school and not substituting for regular programming. Here's where, where you'll talk about that community component and then just some audience numbers. Um, so this is one of the sections that depends on which button you clicked above. Um, each project has a different set of artistic quality and merit questions and we'll go through all of those. But this first of all is the one for artist residencies. 
So you'll talk about the artists involved in your project. You'll need resumes for them um, and also a sample lesson plan for them. You'll be able to put samples of their work here. You can upload um, images or other files in a couple fields. If you have a lot of images, you may want to put them all into one document, like a Word document or PDF, in order to put them all into one field. Um, below, there is also a bunch of website fields. So that is the artistic quality section for artist residencies. I'm going to go back up and click our other button here so we can see what we have for field trips. Oh, I went past it. Um, so here you'll talk about the places that you're planning to visit, the performances, um, and you can supply a lot of detail about that. Again, you've got a place for your websites for the places that you may be visiting. So just a couple things to do there for field trips. Go back up and change us to the juried student art show. Um, then you'll need to do the artists or jurors that are involved in your project. We've got spaces for their resumes. They'll also each need to submit a letter of commitment that says, yes, I'm agreeing to be a judge, but also um, how they're going to approach giving feedback to those student artists. And they've got some um, websites if you have something, an artist website that you'd like to add. And then finally, for the prepackaged theater experience, um, information about the theater company and the actual artists from that company that will be coming, um, resumes from them, a lesson plan or a production schedule of what they plan to do, samples of the company's work. You can upload or add websites. So those are the, the four options for um, questions regarding artistic quality, depending on what type of project you're doing. Um, you'll, there's also two different budgets here based on what you click on. Since we're on the prepackaged theater right now, we'll take a look at that one. Um, so this budget is different because this um, type of project requires that cash match from you. So here you'll enter in any costs that you have, whether it's artists, any supplies, transportation, publicity, anything that you're renting. Um, and then based on that cash cost, this will calculate for you here um, the minimum amount of match that you need to provide. So then you'll need to fill in here at least that amount um, if you're charging um, for tickets to come see that show and or if you have any other income for that and here um, school cash budgeted for that project and so then you'll be able to put in your amount requested here so we will flip back to one of the other projects and take a quick look at the other budget And this one is good for the residencies, the field trip, and the art show. So you'll see you enter the same kinds of costs um, and your request, and then you just have to answer if that cost is more than the grant amount that you can receive, what other funding sources are you using to make up that difference. Um, and this may have been a little confusing seeing all of those there, but once you click that button at the top of the page for the right project, you'll only see the options that you need to do. Um, you'll need to have an outcome evaluation plan. So you'll need to have at least one goal for the project. Um, what are you looking to get out of this project? What do you hope the students learn? 
and then you'll need to have a way to measure that whether you met that goal. Um, you may want to do um, before and after student surveys, other kind of responses from the students, um, lots of ways to do that. Here's a place for you to put that um, evaluation tool if you are using a written survey. Um, then just some contact information. You can put your school, your district, if that's different from uh, your actual school name. Here's where you enter information for the project director and authorizing official. Um, and then this next section is just some data collection that we need to send on to the state. Um, any other grants that you've received, not from us, but from other funders in the last three years, uh, an estimate of your annual arts expenses, And just um, note here that you should only include expenses for arts activities that are outside the curriculum. Um, then you've got just a couple fields here. Well, you, you'll need to grab a code. Um, if you click on that link, it'll give you the options and then you can come back here and type in the one you need. Um, we'll need the names of your school board members and just a couple more data fields. And then here you'll have your um, electronic signature. When you're ready, you can click here to save. Or if you're all finished, submit. We're just going to save for the moment. You'll see it lists for you the questions that you have not finished. So it won't let you submit it if you are missing one of the questions that you needed to answer. Um, and then if you click on this home button, it takes you back to your dashboard and you'll see you've got a Arts in the Schools grant listed here. To go back in and edit, just click here on the edit button. Um, and later, if you receive a grant, you'll come right back to here to access your contract and your final report. All right, let's go back to the slides. So some tips as you're working on your application. It's really good to start as early as you can so you have time to gather up all the information you need, any of those uh, work samples that you need to gather. And then you'll also have plenty of time to ask questions of us. Um, make sure you read the guidelines carefully and read the questions fully, making sure to answer all of the parts of each question. Some of them have a couple parts to them. Um, as we talked about before, keep your answers clear and concise. It's also good to assume that the grant reviewers don't know anything about your school and your project, even if you're doing a residency that you've done many times before. And then it's always good to have someone proofread your application. You can call us to talk about your project before starting an application. That's always a good idea if you're not sure whether you're in the right program or you have eligibility questions. Um, and then as you're filling out your application and run into questions about, oh, how should I answer this? Give us a call. Um, and we can also review your application before you submit it if you contact us up to about two weeks before the deadline. After that date, we can't guarantee that we'll be able to look at it, but before then, we certainly can do that for you. Once you submit your application, uh, SMOC staff will review it for eligibility and completeness, and then it will go on to a panel of individuals from the SMOC region. They'll discuss and score the applications based on the criteria for this program, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then finally, our board approves the funding based on the recommendations of the grant review panel. So for this program, here are the criteria. 
um, you'll see that the artistic quality and merit of the project is worth the most. So that would be the section where you describe um, the artists or institutions involved in the project and have those work samples. So that's really important. Um, next is the impact on the participants for 11 points. Feasibility of the project, which will be, um, does it seem like you planned it well? Does your budget make sense? Um, that's worth five points. And then finally, that outcome evaluation plan is worth just two points. If your grant is awarded, you'll need to complete an online contract within 30 days. And we talked about where you can find that online. After completing your contract, you'll receive 80% of the grant award before your start date and then you'll receive the remaining 20% after your project and your final report are completed. You'll need to acknowledge SMOC's financial assistance on all publicity and promotional materials. There'll be a credit line included in your grant contract that you'll need to put on all those materials. Uh, you may need to use the Minnesota Legacy logo, depending on the source of funds for your particular grant. Um, and those uh, credit lines and posters and logos will be sent to you and are also available on our website. You'll need to complete an online final report within 60 days of your project end date. So it's a good idea um, right as your project is getting started to take a look through that report and know what kinds of information you're gonna need to gather during the project. If you need to contact us, we are in our office in Marshall Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30 p.m. Usually someone is here over lunch, but not always. So that's a good time to call ahead and check. Um, we've got our phone and email there. Feel free to contact us anytime with any questions. And thank you for joining us today.